Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. In this podcast, we discuss mystical works of literature and how they relate to recovery. We hope you enjoy today's podcast episode. Thinking. It's it's a big one. And this morning's verse was a really big one, too. It's been a big day. Big idea day. Which verse did y'all do this morning? 14. 14. Fourteen, yeah. It's about um, you, you can't you you, you can't uh, you can't see it. Okay. Can't touch it, can't hear it, can't feel it, touch it, hear it, but you know it's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just to me, it just is God. That's the definition of God. Yep. I was telling, I was telling about the conversation that we had when um, when we're going through my second step and. I just got to this, I got that frustrated with you, and you're like, you know, you, you have to find God. And I was like, well, well how, how do I find him? Like, well, you stop looking. You stop looking. He's there. He's, he's always been there. It, yeah. That yeah. happened to me, too. It's, you know, I found, it's like when my mom, for all intents and purposes, should have been dead. It's like, I, I wasn't looking for a miracle, but for fuck's sake, it did happen. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, uh, you know, it was miraculous almost. Like people yeah. say, I found God. And you said, you found him. Well, where was he? Was he hiding from you? What was going on? How did you, where'd you have to go look? I stopped looking. Yeah. <laughs> it was really hard. When I was looking, it was really hard to find. He was hard to find. It was hard to find. But um, much easier now. Danny. Hey guys. Hey. Danny. Danny. Right Danny. Danny. <laughs> and Lou, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to have you, sir. You find us through the I assume through the podcast and the Facebook page, or how did you come in contact with us? Yeah, through um, iPod and the iPad, <laughs> the podcast, right. and also from um, what's this now all about? I started there. Oh, okay. Oh, from the from when they announced our podcast on there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. Some time ago, been following you guys. Yeah, um, Marla. Marla's buddied up with Todd. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> And, Mar- and Marla, are you from Michigan as well? Did I remember that right? Yes. Are you? Yep. Up in Clare County. Clare County? Okay. I'm in Royal Oak. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We rock, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn Michigan blue. Um, I've just been a new friend. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. She's in, she's in Norway. It's not a dating site or anything like that. It's just. Let's hope not, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all see the the uh, PDF for today? I I didn't post it in the group till later. I'll put it in the chat uh, for everybody. Uh, it's the fasting of the heart. Okay, there it is. So if you guys want to download it. Everybody, this is Taylor. Hey, Taylor. Taylor. Taylor's one of my sponsors from Colorado. Oh, God. You better, you got to behave today. And if you behave, we won't remove you. You come in with Craig, it's uh, it's a warning. <laughs> so. I'm going there in two weeks. I'm going to Breckenridge in a couple weeks. Can't wait. Taylor. Can you guys, can you guys hear me at all? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Cool. A little, a little bit. Hey, Kate. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Yes, Kate. See, we've got a couple of more minutes. So if if anybody's heard me talk about Danny, my accountability partner in in South Africa from the 5 a.m. club, (laughs) this is Danny there. Yeah. Yeah, I know Marla and I know Buddy from, uh, from a while back. Are you guys doing well? Yes. Thank good. you, Danny. Good. And uh, yeah, it's nice to meet you, Lou and 
Um, sorry, Trevor, right? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, Taylor. Yeah, close enough. Oh, Taylor, sorry. <laughs> My Hi, brother's Taylor. name is Trevor, though, so good okay. job. <laughs> Turn up your volume just a little bit, Taylor. You are a little low. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to mess with it a little bit. Okay. It's a hardcore looking microphone that yeah, he, uh, he's serious. I, I know, I'm trying. Is Are you a nice? DJ or podcaster or a DJ or famous oh, no, artist? Real I just Talk have much, real farce, Taylor. I, I just I just uh I just have too much time on my hands, is what I uh, have. You almost look like you know what you're doing. Yeah, you do. <laughs> just be quiet and nod and we'll think you know everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh zach just emailed uh texted me said he'd be a couple of minutes late so he'll be here in a little bit but we'll go ahead and get started it's four o'clock I'd like to welcome everyone to the Dow of our understanding recovery podcast we have some new folks today we have Marla and Kate. I'll do the ladies first. Welcome Taylor and Lou and Danny back. It's been a while, Danny. Good to see you. Good to see nice you, to folks. See you. And Thank Craig. You. Craig's here. The fasting of the heart. Anyone? Uh, did this speak to anyone? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, on several different levels. You know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Me too. I've, I've, I've got a confession to make. I've not really read all of it. I've read, okay, you know you're a slow you reader, Craig, but uh, I've read some of it. Well, do, do, I, do, I've been, do, do you know what I've been finding lately? I've been finding that if, I, if I'm reading these things, then I'm, I'm, I'm reading too much in them. And I'm sitting, it's sitting, just it's taking up all my time during the day. So I'm thinking to myself, do you know what? Let's just read it and let's just, let's just go for it. Grab the bull by the horns and just. See what happens. Okay. Well, uh, Kay, will you read for us, ma'am? Do you mind? I sure will. Okay. Just, uh, you want to read through the whole thing and then come back? Yeah. Let's do Thanks. that. And then I'm... we can get an idea. We'll help Craig out and we'll read it, read it with, for him and he can listen. And then we can uh, talk about it. It'll okay. help me out too, Craig. <laughs> All right, the fasting of the heart. Yen Hui, the favorite disciple of Confucius, came to take leave of his master. Where are you going? asked Confucius. I am going to Wei. And what for? I have heard that the Prince of Wei is a lusty, full-blooded fellow and is entirely self-willed. He takes no care of his people and refuses to see any fault in himself. He pays no attention to the fact that his subjects are dying right and left. Corpses lie all over the country like hay in a field. The people are desperate. But I have heard you, Master, say that one should leave the state that is well governed and go to that which is in disorder. At the door of the physician, there are plenty of sick people. I want to take this opportunity to put into practice what I have learned from you and see if I can bring about some improvement in conditions there. Alas, said Confucius, you do not realize what you are doing. You will bring disaster upon yourself. Tao has no need of your eagerness, and you will only waste your energy in your misguided efforts. Wasting your energy, you will become confused and then anxious. Once anxious, you will no longer be able to help yourself. The sages of old first sought Tao in themselves, then looked to see if there was anything in others that corresponded with Tao as they knew it. But if you do not have Tao yourself, what business have you spending your time in vain efforts to bring corrupt politicians into the right path? However, I suppose you must have some basis for your hope of success. How do you propose to go about it? Yen Hu replied, I intend to present myself as a humble, disinterested man, seeking only to do what is right and nothing else. A completely simple and honest approach. Will this win his confidence? Certainly not, Confucius replied. This man is convinced that he alone is right. He may pretend outwardly to take an interest in an objective standard of justice, but do not be deceived by his expression. 
He is not accustomed to being opposed by anyone. His way is to reassure himself that he is right by trampling on other people. If he does this with mediocre men, he will all the more certainly do it to one who presents a threat by claiming to be a man of high qualities. He will cling stubbornly to his own way. He may pretend to be interested in your talk about what is objectively right, but interiorly he will not hear you, and there will be no change whatever. You will get nowhere with this. Yen Hui then said, Very well. Instead of directly opposing him, I will maintain my own standards interiorly, but outwardly I will appear to yield. I will appear to the appeal to the authority of tradition and to the examples of the past. He who is interiorly uncompromising is a son of heaven just as much as any ruler. I will not rely on any teaching of my own and will consequently have no concern about whether I am approved or not. I will eventually be recognized as perfectly disinterested and sincere. They will all come to appreciate my candor, and thus I will be an instrument of heaven in their midst. In this way, yielding in obedience to the prince as other men do, bowing, kneeling, prostrating myself as a servant should, I shall be accepted without blame. Then others will have confidence in me, and gradually they will make use of me, seeing that I desire only to make myself useful and to work for the good of all. Thus I will be an instrument of men. Meanwhile, all I will have to say will be expressed in terms of ancient tradition. I will be working with the sacred traditions of the ancient sages. Though what I say may be objectively a condemnation of the prince's conduct, it will not be I who say it, but tra tradition itself. In this way, I will be perfectly honest and yet not give offense. Thus, I will be an instrument of tradition. Do you think I have the right approach? Certainly not, said Confucius. You have too many different plans of action when you have not even got to know the prince and observed his character. At best, you might get away with it and save your skin, but you will not change anything, whatever. He might perhaps superficially conform to your words, but there will be no real change of heart. Yen Hu then said, Well, that is the best I have to offer. Will you, Master, tell me what you suggest? You must fast, said Confucius. Do you know what I mean by fasting? It is not easy, but easy ways do not come from God. Oh, said Yen Hu, I am used to fasting. At home we were poor. We went for months without wine or meat. That is fasting, is it not? Well, you can call it observing a fast if you like, said Confucius, but it is not the fasting of the heart. Tell me, said Yen Hu, what is the fasting of the heart? Confucius replied, the goal of fasting is inner unity. This means hearing, but not with the ear, hearing, but not with the understanding, hearing with the spirit, with your whole being. The hearing that is only in the ears is one thing. The hearing of the understanding is another, but the hearing of the spirit is not limited to any one faculty, to the ear or to the mind. Hence, it demands the emptiness of all faculties. And when the faculties are empty, then the whole being listens. There is then a direct grasp of what is right there before you that can never be heard with the ear or understood with the mind. Fasting of the heart empties the faculties, frees you from the limitation and from preoccupation. Fasting of the heart begets unity and freedom. I see, said Yen Hui. What was standing in my way was my own self-awareness. If I can begin this fasting of the heart, self-awareness will vanish. Then I will be free from limitation and preoccupation. Is that what you mean? Yes, said Confucius, that's it. If you can do this, you will be able to go among men in their world without upsetting them. You will not enter into conflict with their ideal image of themselves. If they will listen, sing them a song. If not, keep silent. Don't try to break down their door. Don't try out new medicines on them. Just be there among them because there is nothing else for you to be but one of them. Then you may have success. It is easy to stand still and leave no trace, but it is hard to walk without touching the ground. If you follow human methods, you can get away with deception. In the way of Tao, no deception is possible. You know that one can fly with wings. You have not yet learned about flying without wings. You are familiar with the wisdom of those who know, but you have not yet learned the wisdom of those who know not. Look at this window. 
It is nothing but a hole in the wall, but because of it, the whole room is full of light. So when the faculties are empty, the heart is full of light. Being full of light, it becomes an influence by which others are secretly transformed. Thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. Kate, you have any comments starting out on this or you want to listen or? Um, I can really relate to the idea of, of wanting to help people like when, or whatever, I keep, kept saying his name wrong, but the, the, the guy that's talking to Confucius. Right. Um, Yen Hui. Um, and wanting to like force, force them out of, out of kindness, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to force my ideas, like, especially in recovery, you know, wanting to help people when I sponsor them, wanting to guide them forcefully along the right path, you know, and, um, I really like his different ways that he, uh, thought, oh, I could do it this way. Ah, I could do it that way. I could keep to myself, but really secretly be trying to do it this way. You know, and um, Confucius then says, you know, kind of counters all of his different methods and turns to the Tao in the end. It's interesting how he had no idea what the right way was. And really, Confucius did not give him a solution. He just told him to, if he fasted, did the fast of the heart, in other words, if he became empty and started looking, then he would find the right way. So it wasn't even Confucius said, do it like this. He didn't. He said, you know, you become empty and you'll see how to do it. He still didn't tell him how to do it. I kind of read it as like if if you live the Tao, that's that's how you can help people. You just live in the Tao, and that that is how it works. You know his that's first right. line there. I'm sorry, Marla. You You're right. There's no. He didn't give him an answer. He just said the goal is inner unity. Inner unity. He he said the goal is inner unity for fasting which means that connectivity, I think it means that connectivity that we, we find out with everything that I am you, you are me, we're the same. How can I help you? <laughs> you know, not how can I convince you or trick you or anything else? Craig? So the main thing that jumped out at me there is, well, there's two things. The, fir the first one was to act without the expectations. Just go in and do what's right. Just go and do what's right for the people, not what's right for me, because then I'm setting my intentions above everybody else. And it's the exact same as when we're in recovery. You know, just like Kate says, we're forcing our will on people, saying like, "You will do this, and you know, you will do that, and you'll be fine." That's not for everybody. Everybody has to get treated as as, as individuals, and it's just it's just like illnesses and, and sicknesses. Everybody has a different sickness and a different illness, and the one cure is not necessarily the same cure for everybody. So everybody has to get dealt with on a, on a, a, a like, like a one on one basis. So there's the act of that expectation, and there's the, also the um, was it the um, the attraction rather than promotion. So rather than going out there and promoting yourself as an I'm this great healer, I'm this great this that and the other, just go in and just do do what you need to do. And again, I relate it to recover because I see what somebody else has got. And I see he's got that by the way that he's living his life, by the way he's doing his things. He's not coming in and saying, look at me, look at me. Oh, sorry, sorry, let's do the accent. Well, look at me, look at me. Look what I got. You know, it's, it's a case of, you know, this is, I, I see what he's doing in his life and that's what I want. And I think that's really what Confucius was saying to, to the guy here. Listen, just, just, go, just go and be you. You don't have to, you don't have to be anybody else. And people actually appreciate you for what you are and, and what you, what you can do for people. Any of you new guys, uh, just unmute and I'll see it or use the raise hand function under participants if you want to. Either way, and I'll call on you. If you've got something, just uh, get in line. We're, uh, we're just discussing what we're seeing in this. 
Anyone else right now? I, I do want to explore the idea of listening with your spirit. Yeah, I wanted to kind of work my way through from the beginning yeah. okay. and see any nuggets till we got and then talk about that because that's that's the whole point, I think, Marla. Uh, yeah, maybe we should go like paragraph by paragraph or something. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, it's so long. Uh, <laughs> How about that? The first thing that jumped out at me was in the second paragraph where uh, he Confucius told him what would happen, uh, that he would bring disaster upon himself. Mm-hmm. That I, the Tao, I, yeah, yeah. I highlighted that you, the Tao has no need for your eagerness. Yeah. <laughs> you will only waste your energy in your misguided efforts. <laughs> And it says what the progress of what happens when we're serving out of self, too, like you were talking about, Kate. We waste our energy and we become confused and then we become anxious. You know, anxiety always comes from fear for me. Once anxious, you will no longer be able to help even yourself, much less someone else. Taylor? Yeah, I really like this. And the concept that comes to mind is you know like when i when i think of this i think of like the path of least resistance and i feel like that's what's kind of being said when this is talked about is you know when a dam breaks right the the water flows it doesn't know where it's going to go but it follows the path of least resistance and same with a fire exploding right when when fire explodes inside of a room it follows the path of least resistance and i feel like when we're caught in our own way we are the one resisting and this is getting outside of the resistance and allowing the energies to unfold as they should be, as they should portray themselves, as opposed to our will of trying to make them do certain things our way. And it's really just another way of saying to get out of your own way. Thanks, Taylor. That's good. Uh, Lou. Yeah, it's kind of like he's trying to, you know, Yen, I won't say his last name either. It's good. I won't say it right. Um, it's like he's trying to strategize on how to be genuine or to have all these tricks that he's going to play on how and how he's going to be authentic, an authentic person when he gets there with all these kind of hacks and strategies and things. And, and Confucius is saying, no, don't don't be so eager on that. Uh, kind of like Taylor was saying, you know, just get out of your own way. Let yourself be empty. And then, and and then you have the whole universe of possibilities. But when you go in there with this strategy, and if that doesn't do, I'm going to do my backup plan, and then I'll do my other plan. Um, this doesn't work. That next sentence says the sages of old first sought the Tao in themselves, then looked to see if there was anything uh, in others that corresponded with Tao as they knew it. So. Basically, uh, Yin had not pursued the Tao in himself first. So he's saying you've got to, you know, uh, you've got to pursue the Tao in yourself before. Then you can see how to do these other things and how to how to help if there's something there for you to do. That the efforts are in vain until you do that. Craig. So then goes on to say, um, if you do not have Tao yourself, what business have you? spending your time in vain efforts to bring corrupt politicians into the right path. So two things. Who knew there were actually corrupt politicians? Who knew? And the second one was, um, what, is, what does he mean by that? Is, is, he, is he kind of saying, like, don't, don't go above your station. Don't go, you know, just stay on the ground. Because we, we, we always talk about water being in the valley and going to the lowest. As he as he said, like go to go to the lowest, go go to the people that are suffering before you go to the people that that aren't. I think he's just saying you've got to pursue uh, the Tao and you before you do anything else. Right. I think it's just that simple. Is that what you were saying, Marla? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just that simple. And he had not done that, and that's what the fasting of the heart is about. Is about emptying yourself. And moving past your plans and your ideas and learning how to tap that intuitive voice that we all have within us. We know the times that we've, we see that and that happens. All those times when you're talking to someone and they say, it's funny you say that. Funny you bring that up. 
blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't know how often that happens. You know, we've all seen it. We've all had it happen for us. And he's talking about that. That's the important thing is to get in touch with, you know, work on your spiritual condition. If you want to put it in recovery terms, uh, work on your spiritual awakening. And the rest of this will fall into place. It's almost like emptying yourself for, for having room for everybody else. Yeah, open yourself to the Tao, trust your natural responses, and everything will fall into place. That's from 23. And that's really what what it's saying. You, you got to open yourself up to the Tao first. You can't figure it out before you surrender. For me, recovery started with surrender. Until I surrendered, nothing worked. So I have to I have to learn to yield and surrender and everything. Well, he thought a lot about he had a moral approach. His first approach, I thought, was a moral approach that he came as uh, humble, disinterested, seeking only to do what is right and nothing else. And uh, Confucius shot that one down. Then the next one was looked like a tradition approach. And from what I understand, they were very traditional I guess they still are, but especially at this time, everything was about tradition and form and all those things. And surely he'll honor tradition. No, no, that he shot that one down. And then he, then we started getting to the fasting part, I think, right? That's next. How about this phrase? But easy ways do not come from God. That's on page it says 52. It's the third page of reading. Easy ways do not come from God. Any idea what that might mean? I will post for any latecomers. Maybe we have to do a little suffering and work hard. I'll put the PDF in the chat if you guys need it that came in after I posted it. Uh, I'm just talking that, about that. Yeah, I think it is. It says... Uh, you you must fast. Do you know what I mean by fasting? It is not easy, but easy ways do not come from God. No, you got to pay your dues if you want to sing the blues. <laughs> Taylor? Yeah, so actually somebody I was talking to the other day said something quite profound to me. It was uh, the story of um, the caterpillar in the cocoon uh, becoming a butterfly and the caterpillar was struggling and I'll just sum it up as, as, you know, simply as I can. Um, and the little boy watched it struggle for 10 hours. And so he finally decided to help it by poking a little hole in the cocoon to assist the caterpillar become a butterfly. Well, it, it emerged with a thicker body than a butterfly has and smaller wings than a butterfly has. And that's the way it remained. And what the little boy didn't know was that the struggle is what makes the caterpillar's body turn small. And that uh, then in turn makes the wings grow big. And it's the struggle that makes it have that transition. And I feel like that's similar to what's being said here. I mean, that is a real life application of what I feel like is being interpreted through this is that that butterfly can't be successful in its transformation unless it goes through the struggle and the that exertion of the energies to make that transformation yeah what's the i've heard it said uh to the moth it's the uh for the moth it's the end but for the rest of the world it's a butterfly maybe it's that idea i know when i came into recovery for me um I struggled for six years to learn to surrender. And maybe for me, that was my not easy phase, you know, was learning how to let go. Uh, that was very, very hard for me. Almost died before I learned how to let go. And I was very sincere. I mean, I prayed as hard as I had. I mean, more sincere than I ever pray now. I mean, like my life depended on it. You know, if, I, if there was a sincere praying hard, you know, the praying hard business, I prayed hard, but uh, no relief, no relief at all until I learned to surrender. So maybe that's part of that. That's not easy business. There's no shortcuts, in other words, right? Danny, you have something? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> a few things jumped out at me. Um, 
maybe uh, well firstly going back a little bit he, he, he says um you should be pretty careful um about trying to help others without helping yourself first and then and and i think that is that is a that is actually if well i have a very good friend who's also in recovery and as this this is his his his, his trigger he's also struggled quite a bit with uh, with a few uh relapses and he and he says it always builds up with him trying to assist or help other people around him with whatever he can do and that just starts boiling down quite a lot of anxiety and stress and tension and, and i think um yeah so that's sort of what jumped out of the story for me in the beginning is especially this line um sorry i know i'm jumping back a little bit again that's I mean, fine. you guys are already on, on a on no, page no, 52 no. um <clears throat> but it says you do not realize what you are doing you will bring disaster upon yourself Tao has no need of your eagerness and you will only waste your energy in your misguided efforts. Wasting your energy, you will become confused and then anxious. Once anxious, you will be no longer, you will no longer be able to help yourself. So that for me is a very essential component is um, it's quite a long road. I think until you are in a position where you can comfortably say, okay, I think I've sorted my issues out in a way now and and even then it's not really any of the actionable tasks that is that is sort of approved right to to go it's it's the one where it says look in the end you can only be amongst whoever you want to help it's probably their own responsibility to help themselves so you are going to be powerless regardless um and i think that the fasting component speaks to me in, uh, about that is is the fact that it it emphasizes that powerless aspect and all you can really help in the end is yourself um so uh, yeah so those are the, the the things that that i took from this hey danny i, I really like to at the end he really explained what real help is all of the way through, it seems that Yin was trying to help, but in the wrong way. Mm. If you look at the last page, he says, um, don't try out. This is in the middle of the last page, maybe the second full paragraph there. He says, um, if you can do this, you'll be, uh, well, uh, if if they will listen, sing them a song. If not, keep silent. Don't try to break down their door. Don't try out new medicines on them. Just be there among them because there's nothing else for you to be but one of them. Then you may have success. So I think he's really telling Yin really how he's – that. that's not saying – you're going to know how to change him. All that saying is you go and be with them. You be one of them. Maybe he's really given a, a real uh, uh, example there of what it would really mean to be of real help rather than a contrived help that we think is helping. It's also quite interesting that word, then you may have success. Eh? It's right. It's, it's also not you will have success. No, it's, not at uh, all. And 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 sort of at the onset, you should be okay with that. Yes, <laughs> that you that, that you you let go of in, of your expectations. You know, yeah. And very much like in recovery, that I am not taught that I'm to help someone. I am taught to share my experience. I'm to I'm to share how it worked for me. So if I'm sharing how it worked for me, let's say I'm working with someone new. If they take how it worked for me and if it starts working for them, great. If it doesn't, great too. I mean, for me, I, I mean, it's not, I mean, I, I care about them, but I don't, uh, I don't take the responsibility for getting them sober. It's not like I'm taking a job on, you know, and, and, and uh, I mean, I don't like it when people don't get sober that I, that I know, but 
if they decide not to, I don't feel blame, like I should have done something different or, you know, all those things. It's not like I'm trying to change. I, I, I just share my experience and if it works great. And if it don't, neither one's on me. I don't take the blame or the credit. So I don't, it, it's different from having a job of some kind or some other task that I'm trying to complete. You know, it's a, it's a whole nother, different deal. And I'm, I really like the way he explained here. It's very close to how I think on recovery as far as, you know, I think that, you know, if you have a day of recovery, if you've been sober a day, you can tell someone else how you stayed sober today. <laughs> that doesn't mean you have to go out and put excessive effort to help them or try to fix them in some way. You can just share what you did today. That is so easy. And I think that's a lot of what he's saying here. He's saying, be among them. You know, don't try out things on them. Don't break down their door. Not this excessive effort to change or push. But uh, just be there among them because there's nothing else for you to be but one of them. Then you'll have success. You may have success, like you said, Danny. Uh, it is easy to stand still and leave no trace, but it's hard to walk without touching the ground. If you follow human methods, you can get away with deception. Like I think what he's saying there is uh, all those other ways you were thinking of helping was human methods. And it's interesting. He says that you would get away with deception. Like that's the only thing you have is deception. If you're dealing with human methods and the way of the Tao, no deception. He doesn't say no to the deception is necessary. It says no deception is possible. So that's, uh, that's strong. I like that. I put a note beside that. If I'm doing human methods, I uh, only have tools of deception, tools of fear is all I have. Comments? So I want to get to the point with studying the Tao and studying this stuff where those human deceptions like don't come to mind and the Taoist way and the way of the Tao and doing it I don't know if you would say right but doing it in these more spiritual ways is what comes to my mind first Confucius replied the goal of fasting let's read this fasting part because this is that key to that Kate and this is the same thing I, I did a little bit of research this afternoon I had a couple of minutes and someone else was talking about that this is the description of Zazen that Sensei talks about, oh, by the way, two weeks, he'll be here. We've got to get our questions together for the second verse. So I, I need those this week for any questions you have on uh, the second verse of the Tao Te Ching. And then he'll be here a week after next. So I need to get them to him a week early. So I forgot to mention that. Craig, you have something, sir? Yeah, so just just what Kate was talking about. We talk about this all the time in, 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 the, um, in the Thursday afternoon meeting. We're talking about you know how can we actually live this thing? It looks fantastic when it's all written down, and when you read it, you feel all spiritual, and you're just like, "Wow, that's really good." And then you go into your everyday job, and you're like, within five minutes, you're back to the the doubt is the furthest thing from your mind. The, the closest thing I want to do is run this guy off the road. You know, I never mind your compassion and tolerance. You know, get out of my way. You know, I think the key is consistency. And concentrating on the one thing, because um, I mentioned this, uh, I mentioned this to my sponsors recently this week as well. If we're concentrating on the one thing, then that's the thing that's going to stick to us. If we're diversifying, if we're looking at too many different things, if you if it, so let, let's let's look at recovery. If you if you're doing a A twelve step program, and then you start diversifying to another another program, let's let's say Refuge, Smart, whatever. You're kind of diluting what you're, what you're really concentrating on. And then it's like if you're studying for an accountancy exam and then you start studying chemistry, you're not going to get the chemistry exam grades that you want because you're diversifying off to, to something else. So I think the key to this sort of thing is consistency. Um, Robin Sharma always says the... Um, 
Complacency is the food of our addiction. So consistency is the mother of mastery. So what he's basically saying there is if you're focusing on the one goal, if you're focusing on that one purpose, then you've got more chance of actually achieving it. Is that what you're talking about, Kate? Yeah, I think that's helpful. Well, Kate, my question to you would be, what is it that brings uh, more spiritual awareness, spiritual light into your life, doing more of those things? Mm -hmm. um because he says the goal is inner unity this means hearing but not with the ear hearing but not with the understanding hearing with the spirit with your whole being so it's what develops this relationship with your higher power whatever those things are just put it on overdrive and do more of it you know less friends reruns and more stuff that does you know what i mean you know i mean that's kind of the deal you know We've got to take time to to develop out whatever it is that's causing this connect this connection with our inner self, whatever name you want to put on it. Uh, just do more of those things, whatever that is. And for each of us, it's a little different, and it changes over time. You know, it all develops and changes. For me, at first, it was reading uh, different AA devotional stuff, and it was praying a little bit. Then that moved to more some book readings and some audible stuff and some podcasts of different people's stories about how they got sober. And then that moved to listening to speakers and different things. And that went to starting to study the Tao. And then that, I mean, it just is this path that we start on and it just keeps building and going. And now it's more for me, it's more meditation than anything else. That if I'm having difficulty, you know, if I have some block, I need to sit until the block leaves. So it just keeps changing for us and evolving. And we only know what it is that's helping us, you know, that uh, helps that connectivity. Uh, Taylor? Yeah, during this whole conversation, I couldn't help but thinking about like two different things. I'm relating this to like uh, two different uh, I don't know if you guys would call them sports or not, but darts and bowling. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, and the reason why I bring it up is, <clears throat> so I throw darts on a regular basis. Um, and it's so funny how one day I'll be hitting my targets. I'll be right on consistency. Um, and then the other day, uh, I don't know what it'll be, but my focus will like, I can't decide if I want to throw at the 16 or if I want to throw at the 19 and I'll, I'll, I'll hit the 18, like, <laughs> you know, and, but it's because of my divided focus that my dart finds the middle <laughs> uh, and, you know, doesn't seem to hit either one. Um, and I feel like that's kind of what's being talked about here is I, and, and it's the fraction of a second that I lose that focus right before I throw the dart and I go, Oh, wait, no, I want to go 19. And then boom, it hits right in the middle. Um, and then same, like with bowling for me, uh, you know, there's many different bowling styles, right. And like, this is just all what this is making me think of right now. I could be totally off the mark on this, but you know, I'll, I'll bowl a certain way one game and I won't, I won't be hitting anything, but it's so weird for me. I think of that as failure. That means I need to change my bowling style. No, it could just mean that I can just stay to the same bowling style and then keep repeating it over and over and over again until eventually I dial it in, right? We can make minor adjustments as opposed to scrapping the whole project. But what I do, the way my brain thinks is, nope, you were bowling with your thumb. Now you're going to bowl with your pinky. Like, I'm going to change everything. Like, and that's not necessarily the right approach. Maybe I can still bowl with my thumb, but make minor tweaks, right? Like, I don't have to change the whole style around to something different. So. Thanks, Taylor. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Hey. Is that? Hey, uh, so the, to, to go to the question that kind of, I think Kate was talking about, she mentioned, um, wanting to, uh, you know, to have that spiritual approach be the go-to reaction. The first, you know, like this is, you know, your, your first response, you know, and, uh, 
one of the things that I, I've realized and that I'm, I'm slowly realizing over time is that I'm never going to have that re- that revelation. You know what I mean? I'm never going to be in a place where I'm able to say to myself that the way I have it right now is the perfect way. You know, that the way um, that my first gut reaction is always the the right reaction because whenever I'm in that place, I already missed the mark. You know what I mean? Um, on page 53 right there, he says uh, in the first full paragraph, he says, what was standing in my way was my own self-awareness. Mm-hmm. If I can begin this fasting of the heart, self-awareness will vanish. But the thing about self-awareness vanishing is, is you don't, you don't get to say, oh, all my self-awareness is gone because that's self-awareness. If you ever get to the place, this is some of that like uncarved block stuff, you know? If you ever get to that place, you're not going to be thinking, oh, I got here, great. You'll just be there and it'll be fine and it won't be a question that you're having. That's it. That's at least that's what I tell myself. I don't know. I thought I was looking at that self awareness as being meaning something different than we usually think of as self awareness. I was thinking of it just meaning that I was in my own way, that he was in his own way. All of his excessive effort when he had not learned to surrender and listen from within. Instead, he went out and just wanted to work, 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 work before he actually looked within and that he was in his own way. I think that's right. I think also as as a part of that, you could also say that it was just it's just having an agenda. You know what I mean? Like having. Having a plan, this is this is my plan. This is the way that it's going to work. This is how I'm going to affect change. Um. You know, it reminds me, too, the ninth step promises, you know, that suddenly we realize God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. It's like we see it after the fact. Yeah, 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 I think that's right. So so it would be the same kind of deal. Same kind of deal. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's the place you get to, and it, I think, yeah, you you realize it after the fact. It's... But we have to seek within. We have to spend this. Our effort goes into seeking the fasting, those things. Uh, Lou, you have something? Yeah, my uh, recovery tradition comes out of Al-Anon. And so we're, you know, we're the fixers. We're going to go, we're like, yeah, and we're going to go over there and fix this. We're going to take care of it. That's what we do. We we, uh, we find people that need taken care of, and then we take care of them. We fix it all up. Um, in, In my program, it was... You know, that didn't work. <laughs> I tried all those strategies. I tried, you know, tradition and religion and psychology and all those things, and none of it worked with this with our son, who um, was our alcoholic. Um, and it wasn't until getting to that kind of some place of serenity, and in that in that place of serenity, you just let go of all that. You know, let go of strategies, and you let go of fixing, and you let go of all of that. And, and to me, that's a lot like. Um, what the Tao is, it's that centeredness, that serenity, that grace, maybe is another word. And it's only when you do the work to, and the non-work, I guess, the letting go, the surrender to get there, for me, that it even approaches anything that makes sense. And then when you lose it, you get kind of you get kind of jealous of it. And you want it back really quick. Thank you. Thanks. It's like the, the kingdom of God, not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy. And when I lose my peace and joy, I want to seek for that again. Yeah. You know, what? I, I had a thought about how I always kind of felt about sponsorship in that, how, you know, in, in terms of, okay, in terms of sponsorship, I never found somebody who, who fit with me because they're, they didn't, I don't want to say no, but they um, didn't hadn't done the work yet, and it always seemed ridiculous to me that somebody could only had to have a year of sobriety to help somebody else. And I, I mean, I understand fellowship and accountability and all that, but how could somebody who's a year in have 
possibly understand all of all of it. So I, I therefore gave that up, sponsorship. I have an answer for you. I know you do. <laughs> I love your answer, too. <laughs> okay, now, uh, the next to the last little paragraph on the last page says, you're familiar with the wisdom of those who know, like the person with 30 years, but you have not yet learned the wisdom of those who know not, okay? That's the person with the year. And what that means is, for me, that what I think it means, is the person that sponsors you, Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So the hearing was dependent upon the person listening, not upon the person speaking. I don't know how many times I've been in a meeting and I would need some answer about something or think I needed an answer. I was looking for an answer. And the person who knew nothing, in my thinking, would say something in a meeting, and I would hear what I needed to hear. I mean, it, I mean, it happened a lot. I just figured out that one way I can surrender is to go to a meeting. Because if I go to a meeting, that's the last place I want to be because I don't want to listen to anyone else. I don't want to be there, but I go, and if I go and I listen, um, and my, and I have, and I open my heart, I can usually hear what I need from the most unlikely people. I know, but you're talking about being in a meeting, which I agree with you. Well, a one-on-one -on -one sponsorship with somebody who hasn't done the inner work, it doesn't work for me. Well, what I'm what I'm saying <laughs> is, I think a person that sponsors does not have to have this all figured out, but they do have, I think they, they have to be surrendered. They have to be working the program themselves, obviously. But if you're working with someone in my thinking, um, if you're seeking, you're going to find. Now it may not be from that person. It might be from someone else. But if you're looking, you're going to find what you need from somebody. So um, that's what I, the, the things I share with people have to do with their listening, not my knowing, I guess would be the way, the way to say it, you know, and, and uh, does that make sense, Marla? Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Um, Taylor. Yeah, I love this. Uh this topic because what it has me thinking of is I can only speak from my own experience, of course. Um, and that is, I would only allow in my mind, uh, my first sponsor would, was somebody who came to me and sought me out. And then I realized that I wanted what he had. And then my second sponsor was even more so along those lines of what I wanted and what I desired for myself and my recovery. So by no means would I ever actively go out and seek somebody who I felt was living a life I don't want to live. So I completely understand uh, that perspective. Um, and by no means would I ever want to seek somebody with that. Now, the, the interesting part that I'll add to that is regardless of if they have 30 years or one year. And what I mean by that is, you know, I, I want to find somebody that I can connect to. And I feel like, you know, in my life and in my journey, I have met people that have so much wisdom and so much growth and so much connection and they're 17 years old. And that's a real life example. Um, and then I've met somebody who is, you know, uh, 30 plus years sober and they're on step one again because of where they're at in their life. They need to rework things. They need to, so they have the time, but, but they're, they're, they're recycling through their, through their, through their efforts. And so for me, um, I feel like I, I would be getting in my own way trying to figure out those things and more along the lines of, I need to keep it simple for myself and just go, Hey, you know, is this somebody I want? Is this, is this something I can see myself doing in my life and look from that perspective, as opposed to quantitative times and, and how, you know, and how much work I think they've done. 
You know, thanks, Taylor. Um, I think the whole idea here is looking even past sponsorship in just general. Anytime we think we need an answer for something, we need a solution. And learning how to tap this no-not wisdom, K-N-O-W, you know, not knowing wisdom instead of this having to know business. Um, Craig. Yeah, just to just to float the sponsorship thing a little bit more. Um, uh, it took me it took me nearly two years to find my sponsor. There was a couple of there was there was a couple of people there that I was kind of thinking to myself, Do you know, what? maybe should, I, I like I like what that guy's talking about, and you know, I, I like what this guy's doing. But something always stopped me from asking them to to be my sponsor. And then when I met Buddy, there was just that click. There was, there was just, in fact, Buddy almost challenged me because I think he actually, I think he actually quoted a part from the, um, from how it works. I think he says you're constitutionally incapable of being honest with yourself. <laughs> and for me, that's a challenge because I'm thinking, who the hell are you to tell me that I'm constituted? What, what does that even mean? <laughs> so, but the, the only. So I, I kind of took that up as because nobody, nobody had actually, nobody had had that level of a conversation with me, and that's what attracted me to that, is the fact that I have somebody in my life that's going to call me out and all my bullshit. That's exactly what I need. The only, the only question I really asked when, when we were kind of formulating where the relationship was going to go was, who are you accountable to? Do you have a sponsor as well? Because for me, that's incredibly important. I don't just want to be following somebody blindly because I, I like what he's saying. Because as far as he, he, he might just be reading stuff from a book and just regurgitating it. I need to know that that person has got that accountability in place as well. So for me, that that was an important part of, of finding a sponsor. And it turns out the other people that I was looking at, they don't have sponsors. So it's something, something pushed me that way. It's this... Uh following this inner light that he's talking about here. Yeah. And I think that's the whole point, Kate, is getting to the point with this that we have this surrender that we're able to be motivated from within instead of circumstances. You know, we learn to to be empty enough to to seek knowledge where we wouldn't before. You know, to love in a situation when we used to discriminate and hate and, you know, be better than or less than, you know, all those, all those things that we learn how to be spiritually uh, connected and become, it says here, uh, fasting of the heart empties the uh, faculties, frees you from limitation and from preoccupation. Fasting of the heart begets unity and freedom. That's from the top of the last page. And I think that's what it's about. That's the whole point for me of this whole walk is getting past this disconnection I felt with everyone and knowing, and if I know I'm connected and we're a part of the same, I'm going to, look out for your best interests. I'm going to want to help you. And if I'm connected and I'm surrendered, I've, I've learned that I don't have to say anything. I just send them love and then I'd respond in the, I just know how to respond. And sometimes you don't respond at all. You know, sometimes you say nothing. Sometimes it's just like what he said here. There's nothing else for you, but to be one of them. See, I, I think that we want another solution like these other solutions he had. I want a plan. I want the steps of the plan. I want it all laid out. And what this is saying is no. It's the opposite of that. This is the paradox of the whole thing, I think, is that, hey, you surrender, you uh you build this relationship with your higher power, ever what that means to you. For me, that means a lot of meditation. For me, that's a lot of sitting. 
of doing nothing. Now, that's the only time doing nothing. Hey, Zach, I listened to our uh, what we recorded yesterday. I listened to it this morning. And I think basically that's talking about uh, meditation is about the only time that we do nothing. That's the real doing nothing that causes us to be able to be at that place of peace and everything else. So it was really good. I went back and listened again. I was, I was surprised. I didn't think it was that good, but uh, I got a lot out of it. Thank you. But I think it's that same thing, Kate. I, I think that's what it's all about. We want this huge solution when it's the opposite. You know, it's the surrender again. Anything else, guys? I think uh, I, <clears throat> when you were talking about the surrender now, it sort of actually a lot of the story just links up to the serenity prayer in a way, right? Accept the things, you know, try and change the things that you can change and accept the things that you cannot change. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah, it does. Otherwise that. you are going to mess yourself up uh, yeah. with stress, anxiety and, and uh, yeah, that I've successfully done a few times. So <laughs> it's really <laughs> but, about but, the first three steps, isn't it? Yeah, I'm powerless. My life's unmanageable. I got to believe that uh, there's a source that can bring me back to peace, can take care of this insanity, and that I turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand Him. So that's really this is about doing doing the steps, really. Um, yeah, all goes back to the same stuff, doesn't it? I've got to let go and I've got to surrender ever how I can do that. That's what I have to do. Just open my heart. Like, uh, who is it? Tethered soul. Mickey, uh, singer talks about just opening your heart to everyone. That's the way he put it. He said, you learn just to open your heart to everybody. And I'm like, and you just live with an open heart. And for me, that's that's what that would mean. That's what that would mean. Is, is that similar to where it talks about um, it's working with others, where it lets the, lets the drunk come into your house and burn your mattresses? I don't know about that. <laughs> I haven't been called upon to do that, Craig. My wife, I don't think, would tolerate that. <laughs> but, you know, she's very patient with me going and helping anytime I need to. Mm -hmm. It's about being surrendered, whatever that means, you know. Uh, and I think that's the whole point is giving up our need for all of these agendas, all of these plans and learning to, to live from within than from our ego and all of these, uh, our intellect and letting our intellect go and learning to live from our heart. Any other comments, guys, before we close it? Hey, I'd like to welcome all of our new folks, guys. Y'all are welcome anytime. We, we'll always yeah. put this, we always put this uh, link up in the uh, Facebook group that Craig uh, has orchestrated. The Dow of Our Understanding, just uh, search for that. It's a private group. And we'll, uh, we post this link there, and you're welcome to join us as long as you behave. <laughs> what's, what's the email address? What, what's, yeah, we, what's our email, Marla? Uh, uh, the good question for Sensei for, for two weeks' time. Oh, it's, it's wisdom56321 at Gmail. Can you permanently post that? Yeah, I'll put it in the notes. Okay. All it's right. in the notes for every podcast from this point forward. Uh, we'll, we'll just post our questions in the Facebook group, Craig. Definitely. Right. And I'll do a post, and then we'll we'll add them all to that same post. I'll I'll go ahead and do that. So, you guys, if you can, go ahead and start getting any questions you have for him. He likes those beforehand, so he can ruminate on them a little bit. But uh, he's excited. He loves this. So good. We're getting a lot of good feedback. A lot of people are enjoying it too. I'm I'm happy that we that's happening. So, any comments before we go, guys? Y'all good? Everyone good? Okay. Oh, thank you. Y'all have a great week. Hello, this is Buddy C. I wanted to make you aware of several recovery-related resources that I've posted in the episode description. These resources include a list of recovery podcasts, a free sober meditation app, daily recovery email, shared Google recovery calendars. Hope you put some of these resources to use and have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends in recovery.